Okay, this is Brent from Trade Guild, that blogspot.com. I'm back with part two of our video. We're talking about the tech bubble. Uh, we talked about all kinds of manias from the Dutch tulips to 1929, 1987. So here's um, real house prices from 1975 to 2006. You can see we have, this is in pounds actually. I don't know where I came up with this chart, but we're somewhere here around the $65,000 level. And um, over the course of 20 years or so, we're up here at the $170,000 level. Uh, to give you a little more perspective on that, here is home price index, and it's adjusted for inflation. Here's uh, building costs over here in this light blue line. Here's the home prices. You can see this vertical ascent. And here's um, population and the yield on the 10-year Treasury bond. And this is 1920, this is uh, 1940, 1950, and here we are in 2007. And you can see it's just really, 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 really gotten out of hand in my opinion. So what are the issues with this? Why is it such a problem? Um, one issue I think that is really uh, becoming a major, major problem is who has exposure. Next is how much exposure do they have? And I think it's very, very difficult for them to say. I don't, I don't think anybody can say at this time, we've taken a write-off or a write-down on our earnings uh, related to the real estate problems and the mortgage problems, and we're done with it. I don't think anybody can say that at this point because it's unfolding. Um, who has exposure? People are cropping up. Banks are cropping up. You know, Over the weekend, we got um, a surprise, and this week we had a couple others come out. So there's a lot of uncertainty and the market hates uncertainty. Um, how will this affect the baby boomers retirement? Baby boomers, the um, largest population segment in the United States are coming of retirement age. They're starting to retire. They're starting to take out their retirement funds and, and to um, plan on living on that money. And the question is, will that money be there? A lot of these people put you know, their, their money into what they believed were safe mortgage backed assets. And now we're finding out that there is major, major problems with this. We don't know who's got exposure. We don't know how much exposure they have. We don't know what the retirement packages of the baby boomers are going to look like when they go and they, um, they start to redeem those. The market over the last several years, not so much recently, but over the last several years, you probably remember them saying, um, the talking heads on TV, that the market has been propped up by consumer spending. Consumer spending um, has been propped up by the fact that people's uh, homes have been appreciating uh, just dramatically and they have a lot of um, credit that is available and that's what they've been spending. Well, that's dried up. That's a thing of the past, more or less. And finally, uh, I mean, there's a lot of issues, but in my mind, finally, uh, Fed action. What is the Fed going to do? And it seems like the Fed is really sitting on their hands at this point. They've done some things, but I think at this point, uh, further action really runs the risk of inflation. And it's not the Fed's job to bail out banks. It's the Fed's job to um, set monetary policy and keep inflation low. So they have really have been painted into a corner, I think, with this. Uh, if they act, you know, what does it say to the market? If they don't act, what does it say to the market? Uh, but the bottom line with mania is the bottom line with um, what's going on right now with the subprime is, you know, like I said, people were telling me, oh, it's different this time. You know, well, we live in a hot real estate market. Um, doesn't matter if the rest of the market goes down. People are always going to buy here. It's just not true. It's just not true. The bottom line is when housewives, waitresses, nothing against housewives or waitresses, doctors, um, everybody, anybody, when they start getting in, if they're non-professionals in the real estate market and they start getting in on the action into the craze, trying to grab their share, you have to realize that the end is near. And I had a lot of friends who are stay-at-home moms that became real estate speculators and some of them uh, did okay and some of them got trapped. But all the manias are the same. They all say this time it's different and it never, never is. Under normal circumstances, um, looking at some charts here, let me pull up a couple things. Uh, let's look at the Dow. We're going to look at um, 
the diamonds actually because I have uh, better indicators available. Um, like I was saying before, a lot of times when we see market tops, um, they're kind of not so volatile. And I mean, market tops are always volatile, but not volatile uh, like we saw in previous 1987, 1929, because um, what's happening is the professionals are distributing their shares. They're getting out of these positions. They're unwinding them. They're reducing their exposure. And guess who's buying? A lot of, a lot of the time, it's the public who's seen you know, this huge run up since, um, really since 2003, I think we kind of got kicked off over here. That's a nice run. So a lot of people see that and, uh, you know, they don't want to get in over here. They're scared. They don't want to get in over here. They get in when they see it like this. And when they get in, it's usually very close to the top. Well, maybe this turns into a head and shoulders pattern. You know, uh, I don't know. But what happens with these patterns is people, uh, the professionals get out. What happens in like the 1987 and the 1929, everybody is trapped and everybody is heading for the exits at the same time, professionals, laymen, uh, the general public, and we get a big sell off like that. So, um, like I said, under normal circumstances, we have these distribution patterns that allow professionals to exit the market. They're selling to the everyday Joes. You know, this is an oversimplification, but you know, it's kind of true. Um, so when everyone heads for the door at the same time, we get a crash. Again, another oversimplification. But if you look at a few of the charts, the Dow 1929, the Dow 1987, and the Dow now, I can't say that we're headed for a crash, but I would say the chances are higher now than they have been. And uh, the situation is definitely, definitely ripe for some major, major trouble. Let's look at a few charts here. I'm gonna to have to do another video because we're gonna start running out of time on this one. I only have 10 minutes per video. But let's take a look at a few things. First, I'm gonna pull up um, some of the great Warden indicators on their T-series of indicators. So this is T115-2115. And this is a percentage of New York Stock Exchange stocks trading two channels or two standard deviations of, uh, below their 200 day uh, price moving average. And what I need to do here is change this price chart to a line so we can better see it. And here we go. Okay. And what I'm also gonna do is put a comparison symbol up and let's use the, the spiders right now because a lot of the problems right now are um, focused and intent more intense in the spiders because of the uh, the very, very strong financial exposure um, that the spiders have. So what we're looking at is the spiders in red, um, percentage of stocks trading two channels below their 200 day moving average in green. And let's take a look at this August period. And we can see when we get spikes uh, like this, typically we're at a very oversold level and the market can rally. We still have some more to go, I think, before we see a similar spike. Um, but right now, we're at 30% of New York Stock Exchange stocks trading uh, two standard deviations below that 200-day price moving average. It was somewhere around 7% last month, so now it's up to 30-some-odd uh, percent. Let's take a look, and let's take a look at the next one. Actually, you know what? I'm going to run out of time. Let's save the next one for the next video. We're going to take a look at a lot more charts. So um, I'll be right back. Brant from tradeguild.blogspot.com.